Um, all right, hi, I'm, I'm Sonia, and today I'm going to talk about some of the work we've been doing in NVIDIA, um, particularly focusing on the research uh, in my group. All right, it's been so much incredible, exciting progress in autonomy, right? From both uh, consumer cars, robot taxis, autonomous trucking. And at NVIDIA, we want to enable as well to be part of this revolution. So we know that AI know that is key, AI is key. basically, you know, many robotic systems today, no, right? Not only for perception, but also for not prediction, for mapping, but localization, mapping, localization, mapping, and maybe even for uh, other parts of like planning. Which means that the robotic development flow has changed a little bit from maybe decades ago, right? So there is a huge collection effort. There's a huge data labeling effort. We need to localize to a map, which we also need to label. And then there's development and training of AI models, uh, as well as the entire stack. And then there's validation, right? So before you actually go and drive in the real world, you need to do some testing simulation to make sure that there are no regressions and that you're doing well in challenging scenarios. Right, and if you have a really, really excellent simulator, maybe you could even push some of the training uh, workflow in simulation as well. Um, so maybe kind of uh, alleviate the need to collect lots of lots of data in the real world, but kind of uh, resort to simulation. It's on height. Um, so th today I'm gonna mainly focus on this aspect just because that's uh, one of the focus on my research group. So we're going to talk about various approaches to simulation. We're going to finish off with a neural simulator that we've been building. All right, so there's kind of different stages or different versions of AI simulation, right? Um, so basically, you know, we have a world state, which is recorded by sensors, and then this goes into some robotic stack. So here an AV stack, where I'm kind of indicating with green, whatever that has AI, less green may maybe means industry uses less AI, but there's an opportunity. And this produces a control in the end, and then this influences the world state, right? Basically where we're going to move and what the other actors are going to do. So the simplest world, the simplest form of simulation is actually going out with a real vehicle in the real world uh, with an actuated car, right? So this would look something like this. So you're driving around, your car is making actions, and um, there's a human driver that's making sure that everything is working properly. Now, what you can do is take all the data and label it, and then maybe supervise parts of the stack. Everything that kind of needs AI, maybe you can you know, devise some grant rule that you think is going to be useful and last function are going to be useful for the ultimate task of driving. Obviously, there's an opportunity as we make these stacks more and more differentiable, not just each individual modules, but actually the entire stack. There's an opportunity to actually push the loss functions to the very end, which basically means maybe a loss function should just be, you know, drive as fast as possible from A to B safely and comfortably. Of course, in a real world, you know, this can only be done evaluation, so human driving is monitoring, but we can't really be training. That would not be safe. And the next question is, of course, imagine we collected this data, but now we have a new stack, right? Can we actually do anything with this data, right? Either for testing and training beyond just, you know, having this like a, uh, open loop uh, labeling. The problem is, of course, that the bottom line, the bottom line is gone. So as soon as we have a new stack and we produce a new control, our pose fictionally changes, but the world state is not going to change. It's going to remain in the data we actually collected. So this is the principle of open loop, right? Which means that in the real world, we would have needed to drive again. Um, then there is an other, another form of simulation, which is just specifically for training and testing, planning, control, right? So here you're explicitly removing all the sensor data. You don't care about it. Removing perception. You're just maybe going to uh, take it out of an old log. So basically stuff you recorded before. You're going to be operating in this very abstract world of uh, a map and you know, traveling boxes. And then this is easy to simulate, right? Using even some simple set of dynamics, something like you know a bicycle model. Uh, and there is an opportunity to have traffic models to actually simulate uh, at least part of these agents in the world, right? So suddenly this becomes closed loop, but it doesn't model perception, 
right? But it's very convenient to actually both test as well as to maybe even train prediction and planning algorithms, as well as traffic models. Right, so potentially we can now, we are a little bit closer to our goal of having the loss function in the end. However, we cannot back prop entirely through the stack. We cannot go back to perception. So this is just uh, an example. So we, uh, our research project here, we're using this kind of simulator for training traffic models, right? These simulators are super fast, much, much faster in real time. So you can do, you know, RL imitation learning uh, across you know, scale. All right, awesome. Now, of course, we want to have everything, right? Not just operating this fictional world. We also want to model sensor data, right? How the world uh, evolves in the eyes of, of cameras, LiDAR, and other sensors, right? So the typical approach would be through graphics. What does this mean? The world state, and I just don't mean the positions and locations of all the actors, but the entire state. So basically all content with all the materials, both for rendering and physics, Everything is created for the, in the graphics version by artists, right? So it's a huge amount of work, but you, know, you can get into a fully known state, which you can then simulate with complex physics um, and of course, traffic models, right? And sensors, because you know everything about the world can also be physics-based, right? And there's a lot of advances in, in this domain to, uh, to simulate, of course, cameras through rendering, but then also LiDAR and radar. I'm gonna just show you NVIDIA Drive Sim, which is this graphics-based simulator. So the nice thing about this is everything is rendered and simulated in real time. So both physics, lighting, photorealistic, and it's hardware in the loop, which means that the compute is both rendering and you're running the stack at the same exact physical time. And because NVIDIA kind of invested to create, so this is all built on Omniverse, uh, this render, you have full control over it. So typically if you use uh, GTA or any game, game engines, there's problems of rep repeatability. Even if you have the same scenario, just play button, press play button twice, there are gonna be slight differences. Here we have full control and we're really after complete repeatability. Press play button twice should be exact same output. All right, great. Now simulation is, is great, right? Uh, Matt already touched on it, so you can very easily create long tail events, right? It's all at the disposal of an artist. You can simulate, you know, fog, rain, all these challenging weather conditions. You know everything, so you know if something is occluded, you know exactly what has moved behind another object. And of course, you can also generate ground truth, such as depth, optical flow, so basically for features, that are not, not typically scanned by real sensors, right? And all of these ground truths come in for free out of the simulator. So you can use it both for testing, but also for training. So here, just showing um, a couple of different ground truths that are very easily generated again for free and they're perfectly accurate, right? So you have semantic segmentation, 4D labels, depth. Yeah, I love, I love this. Uh, you wouldn't believe how much work and how much technology is going into something like this. It's just, it's just incredible. And, you know, I, I love it for what it is today, but I love it, but what the vision of this is. And I think for researchers like us, there is so much opportunity to, sh to shape the future of simulation. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this later. Right, so, so kind of the charter of group is create some sort of a very useful AI tools that are gonna empower or make this graphics-based simulation better in some way. So the first tool I'm gonna roughly touch upon is scenario construction. What does this mean? So you're taking a real world drive, something like we talked about before, and now you wanna re-simulate it, but in the graphics engine. Right, so something like this was a real, uh, real example, right? A real reported drive, and you want to convert it into a simulated environment. Why? First of all, that's exactly the realistic data that you want to simulate. Plus, now you have the power of actually generating useful variations that you can use either for training or at least testing. 
All right, so I thought this was an easy task, but actually we did a little bit of work on this. So you can basically take the video and then predict the, you know, the, the attributes like colors, material properties of all the objects, the type of vehicles, and then you can do asset retrieval. So basically just find the closest asset in the library bank. And then on the right side, I'm showing the, this kind of bird's eye view trajectories that have been obtained automatically. And even though they look pretty good, you can see that they're appearing and disappearing and so on, right? As soon as there's occlusion and they come out of the range of the LiDAR, then basically these are gonna disappear. So, and then that's a problem when you go to a simulated world because you know objects don't just disappear. So what, what we did over here is have a kind of like a traffic model with the latent space where we're optimizing the behavior. So the latent code for each of the trajectories and then we're ex extrapolating both backwards in time and forward in time. So we basically got this consistent world representation. So let me just play you how this kind of scenario now looks. From a bird's eye view. And then from the ego, ego view. And there's still discrepancies. So you can notice a blinker on the car is actually on on the real world and we don't do that yet, but it's gonna come soon. All right, great. So that's basically just taking a drive and porting it into simulation. And now there's lots of opportunities to actually create challenging variations, right? So that you can kind of challenge your stack. In this particular work, and it's gonna be presented here at CVPR, uh, we're specifically targeting ch uh, challenging scenarios to attack a given planner. So not necessarily perception, but for a planner. So imagine we have a regular scenario, maybe just this one that we just shown. And now we're gonna take this uh, traffic model, which, which has this latent code, and now we're gonna try to modify the trajectory of any of these uh, other agents to attack the ego car. So the ego car here is in green and the red is this chosen agent that is gonna attack it. So it's gonna plan a trajectory to basically interject the ego car. Now, obviously there's, there, there's trivial solutions to this. So we want to also make sure that uh, this doesn't happen. So that, what does that mean? So we want to do the same thing, but for the ego agents. We want to find a solution to the adversary. So if there is a solution. So the ego car could have changed the trajectory to be uh, to avoid the accident. Then this is a good challenging scenario. Here is one example in the top left. So this is the attack. So the red car is kind of trying to crash into the green one, and the solution in the bottom basically where the green car is now going to dodge. So this is a valid scenario, basically a merge. So how does this look like here? So the original construction and these are some examples of challenging scenarios. So even for this simple scene, you can now generate tons of data, right? And you can also because you're in graphics engine, you can also modify weather and other properties, visual properties. All right, so one thing that if you notice closely in that video is there's a problem, right? There's a lack of content variability. In fact, this is one screenshot from that view. And you can see that these cars, pairs of cars are actually the same. That might be a little bit of bias on a retrieval module, but there is a problem, right? Because there's just a finite number of cars that you actually have or assets that you actually have in a graphics simulator, right? So there's needs to have AI actually diversify this content. So one of the modules we're working on is, you know, you can take the original asset and then just synthesize many different appearances. Maybe take two different assets and do texture swapping. So that's one way of creating this diversity with more examples in the bottom. Heads. And this is another paper that's going to be presented at CVPR. And we're also now completely generating this content in explicit content. So mesh, texture, material, and everything is going to be trained from imagery, which is available at scale. So just some early results. Just for cars. So this is generated from noise and you can directly port it into a graphics engine. So in the middle, I'm showing interpolated shape and every interpolated shape is again, a 3D model. And we're also generating materials so that you can model properly the reflections. Okay. 
Why is this cool? Well, now the content is differentiable, right? You have a latent code and everything else is a neural network you can back wrap through. So that means that you, I can randomly sample a latent, I can run it through something like mask or Sinan or whatever detector of choice, and I can start optimizing this latent to actually fool my detector. And just a couple of steps of optimization and I already am able to completely fool mask or CNN. Right, so now I can go back to creating those challenging examples and not just fool a planner, but actually also fool the perception system. And we can all agree that this car should have been segmented properly. It does look like a car. Maybe I'll skip this or maybe I'll show you just because it's cool. So uh, another thing that's very important, of course, is uh, uh, character animation, right? If you look at those videos that I was showing previously, the character was kind of uniform. They all looked, uh, you know, very uh, similar to each other, right? And there's just so much work to actually make all this uh, animation system work. So here we're using RL to train more powerful physics-based characters. Um, so this one is putting shield. And basically what would be 10 years of of real time, we can train in three days. So these characters are basically trained in three days and they can perform skills a simulation. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. So you can direct it with a goal or hit, so interact with the environment. Here we can also direct it direction where it wants it to, to go. Maybe stop here, but um, the, 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 now the work is, you know, training is to both run in very environments, reconstructed environments, interact with the environments, and control it with very simple commands, even something like language. So we're hoping in the next few months, we're really gonna be more amenable to uh, using something as like a city simulator. All right, so, um, so this was Rifeson. This was basically the entire thing was simulated with graphics and it required artists to basically create all this content, right? So maybe blue because there's such amount of work, right? Which means that we can never scale if everything needs to be perfectly annotated and created by, by humans. So the question is, can we actually take real world driving data and reconstruct it and have maybe neural networks simulate that data. Which means that now the world state or at least all this content is gonna only be partially known. So whatever we can actually reconstruct from data, which might be 3D geometry that we observe, but not the full geometry and very likely not the materials, right? Maybe for rendering, but definitely not for physics. So our world state is gonna be partially known, which means that our sensor simulation now needs right, which means that we need to have sensors that are also going to be neural networks. They're going to learn to simulate sensor data. The premise of this is scalable content. Can, you know, hopefully soon we're going to be able to simulate at the scale of the city. It's going to be realistic. It's going to be closed loop and we could do end-to-end -end training with it. So let me just show you a little bit of what we've been doing in this domain. We're driving around. There's an incoming car approaching us. And at the top is recorded actions. Oh, imagine I wanna take this drive and I wanna make new actions, right? This was what we really started with. We wanna have perfect reconstruction, but be able to make new actions and the world reacting to us. So we wanna make it closed loop, right? And imagine I want to bring my, my car to a full stop. Right? What does this mean? I can stop the video, but then nothing is going to play. Or I can press the brake, but the video is still going to play such in the same way that I recorded it. Right? So our charter here is going to be reconstruct perfectly such that we can re-simulate in exactly the same way as the first event happened, but also be reactive. So if the ego card makes new actions, we should be able to react accordingly. All right, so this is the final demo and then I'm gonna show you how we actually do it. So here the ego car went a bit sideways. So the other car reacted by also going sideways. 
we do augmented reality so we can do a, insert you know physically simulate partly uh, artist created data and then also other reconstructed content and we simulate all sensors all right so how does this work there's a bunch of ai tools again we're going to put at work uh, one is scene reconstruction so the first thing we're going to do is remove all the dynamic objects and just reconstruct the scene so this is Nerf, NVIDIA has this super fast instant Nerf that trains in a couple of seconds and renders in milliseconds. So it's basically just a real-time renderer. And we're also going to be <coughs> reconstructing geometry. Why geometry? Because we want to do physics simulation afterwards. <coughs> Here is a fly-through. So know that the Cardian drive, so this is a new trajectory entirely, and we have the geometry and we have the camera simulation. And notice that even though it's collected by a car, you can basically at test time at your disposal, you can simulate, you know, like a robot dog or a maverick quadcopter or something. All right, so this was basically just entirely reconstructing the static scene. And we also want to be again reconstructing the dynamic objects and then be able to drive them as well. So here we're going to be using a uh, multi-view reconstruction that's actually going to be presented here at CVPR, where the idea is we want to be predicting explicit geometry, texture, and materials. Let me just play this. So we have multi-view data. This is one reference image. This is a reconstructed model. And because everything is explicit representation, we now have both geometry and because we have materials, we can do material editing. And of course, you can do all sorts of cool simulations on top. OK, all this is trained with differentiable rendering using all the available image data or even sensor data. And because everything explicit geometry, you can do physics on top as well. I'll maybe skip this, but just show you how optimization works. It's quite fast. In one hour, you basically get perfect reconstruction. Again, more details are going to be at CVPR. So we're basically putting this to work for this example to reconstruct this particular car over here, and we can place it back. And notice the shadows as the car is going to drive. And this is thanks to also having the materials reconstructed. I'm going to finish really soon. Um, the shadows were also thanks to augmented reality feature. So we're basically doing lighting estimation. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of details, but basically you can have an input image or even an input video. We're going to be predicting a lighting representation, which is very metric, as well as an HDR model of the sky. And we're going to fine tune all this representation by basically inserting objects in the scene and judging whether the scene looks realistic with a discriminator. So these are just some examples where the synthetic contents, the content from artists was actually inserted in the real uh, imagery. And we've shown that just having this data, so you take real world data, you insert some more objects realistically into this data, you can already boost detection performance. This was a new scene. So now it's at disposal, whatever models you have, you can realistically insert into scenes and also create effects such as, you know, hiding an object behind another object because we also predict depth. Here is a couple of examples now in our particular scene. So here we're gonna insert a construction vehicle with cones. We're using Omniverse for physics simulation. We're gonna show that in a second. So here this car is simulated in Omniverse and we're using AR, we are able to insert it into this Nerf synthesized world. And because we have all these cars reconstructed, now we can do swap and replace from one scene to one other. So basically we can create an object library at scale. And speaking of pedestrian simulation, we can of course also simulate um, humans into the scene. I didn't really talk about LiDAR, but you know, we, we also have a LiDAR simulator, basically using all this neural reconstructed feature to simulate the return of a LiDAR. 
So we not only simulate camera, but also other sensors. And I'm going to skip traffic modeling, but just play the final video again. So all dynamic objects are using our traffic model that I shown previously. So you have a reactive system as a result. This is showing a simple little drive. We are scaling this up. So hopefully in a few months, we can do this at city scale. All right, so basically today I talked mainly about these two different ways of to simulate graphics based and then kind of neural reality, neural simulation. I think the future is really in the mixed reality. And it's really because these graphics renderers, traditional graphics renderers don't really model or don't really incorporate nerve-based training, so neural training. Once this happens in the future, so when everything is part of one simulator, then we can really kind of have this Pick and, pick, pick and choose, you know, what kind of content you want. Neural content, artist content, and then basically have, you know, one of the super powerful simulator. Just to conclude, you know, shout out to the team, uh, my research team at NVIDIA, who has contributed to a lot of the works you've seen. Thank you.